Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here wrapping up day one of the OpenStack Summit live in Vancouver, British Columbia. This is theCUBE Silicon Angles flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host all week, Stu Miniman with wikibon.com, uh, cloud analyst uh, and, and convergence analyst. Stu, we've been covering this market for years. You've been deep in certainly networks um, and converged infrastructure with cloud, now the leading analyst in cloud. Um, big news here is Certification, interoperability, federated identity, these are table stakes. Is OpenStack now crossing over to making it more mainstream? Yeah, so John, I don't think it's ready to say that OpenStack's crossing the chasm just yet. Uh, the stats we've thrown out is from the Wikibon surveys, uh, only about 15% of people uh, you know, in, in our communities, uh, enterprises that are users, are ready to test or deploy it today. However, I, I think the maturity is definitely getting there, uh, the pieces are coming together, and the, the solutions are much ready, more ready for those uh, companies that can either turn to, you know, companies that will put together a solution, or some of the big companies are baking some of the pieces in. As we've said many times on the program already today, OpenStack is not a product, it's a bunch of pieces that are kind of the tools that can be used to build that next generation of IT. Um, and in some ways, you know, I mean the infrastructure layer is supposed to get invisible, John. When somebody goes to Amazon, they don't worry about what versioning they're on, uh, they don't worry about some of the bit parts underneath it, they worry about going up the stack, either putting their applications on it, or using some of those new applications built on Amazon, uh, you know, you've got lots of experience with building apps on Amazon, so. Well, I mean, it's all about horizontally scalable. We heard yeah. that from Brocade, we heard that from Jonathan Bryce. Horizontally scalable, we heard that from Red Hat and Cisco yeah. with Ceph and all the goodness that they're doing. Interesting, Red Hat, Cisco coming together, Stu. Big news. Yeah, so I mean, John, you know, Red Hat, you expect them to be here. You know, you know who has better credibility in open source? Uh, you know, Red Hat, you know, IBM's got great, uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, credibility there. And Cisco gains credibility by partnering closely with a company like Red Hat. Cisco's done come a long way in what they've done the last few years. Uh, a lot of commitment here in what Cisco's doing uh, with the open stack community and working on open source. Uh, you know, John, I, I like what I've heard so far in regards to the networking piece of it. Uh, last year, Neutron was one of the biggest disappointments from what I heard, and today it's companies like Cisco and Red Hat and Brocade uh, and others. I talked to Pl the Plum Grid's co-founder and CEO and what they're doing in this space to help kind of fix some of those pieces to make sure that networking, which is one of the core pieces of OpenStack, are as solid and reliable and mature as compute and storage already are in, in the stack. So I got to ask you, Stu, who are the movers and shakers? Who are the ones that are really going to be exploding onto the scene, that are going to be making a lot of noise, making a lot of go-to-market announcements? Is it the big guys? Who's, you, who's getting your attention? Who, and who needs to do more marketing? Who needs to get the message out there? We heard the CEO of Cloud Foundry Foundation saying they want to get more consistent with, with um, the messaging. Cloud Foundry being Cloud Foundry Foundation, not part of Pivotal. We've heard about, we see HP with a huge contingent here, donating ton of code. So John, we've got a couple of days left that I want to kind of soak myself in the community before I give a final grade or anything like that, um, but I do like what I heard from DEF Corps. We talked to Jonathan Bryce this morning about that, really getting interoperability and potentially even federation. I tell you, moving workloads is something that we talk about a lot, not many customers really want to do it. Cloud bursting was one of those myths that we batted around for years, um, and you're starting to see some places where, you know, you don't want to move the data, that's heavy and hard to do, but uh, you know, I want workloads that can move, I want to have access to data in a lot of different places, uh, so we'll see. I expect this week to hear a lot from the big guys, uh, and I'm excited that we still have a number of smaller players here that are still doing a bunch here uh, at, at the show. We got to talk to a couple today, going to talk to a few more during the week, and starting to talk to some of the, the, the users. There are more users talking in the presentations, many of them brought in by the vendors that are contributing, uh, and you know that, that's one of the big things at this show is always, you got kind of six, 7,000 people here at the show, and you know I think more than half of them are 
are contributing in some way to code, building solutions and putting it all together. So this isn't just the typical tech user show where I go and I bought some product by somebody, but I'm part of this whole wave of open source where I'm contributing to the code, I kind of own it a little bit more. Uh, John, I, I, I've quoted a couple times as an eight Harvard Business Review uh, paper that was done a few years ago called, called the IKEA effect, which means if I actually help build something just a little bit and it's not too tough and it comes out great, I'm actually going to love it. So the question is, is how much work do I have to put into it to build my OpenStack environment? At the end of the day, am I going to love it? I'm not sure that we're quite there yet for OpenStack, but that's one of the measures I want to look at. Well, Stu, great event. We got wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We got day two coming tomorrow, another full pack day. And to me, the action is about certification. That ship is sailing. We heard that on theCUBE. You got to get certified. OpenStack's got to fill in the hardening details. What will be key to this marketplace is the continued innovation. They have to move faster. Pressure from the big guys, and I think the market is responding. Cloud Foundry is a big part of the past, and the infrastructure layer, we heard it Randy Bias lay it out. Things got to move faster. And that's the theme so far, and we're seeing it. Yeah, so, so John, you know, I want to ask you a question, because you always love some of the competitive angles here. I love, I just saw on Twitter, uh, Mark Shuttleworth's giving a presentation, LXD crushes KVM. I mean, wait, KVM, I thought KVM was supposed to get everybody off of VMware, and now we've got the container wars, we're going to have CoreOS on a Wednesday, talking a lot about Docker, so, you know, what, what's your take? Some of the competitive angles, what are the real battles, and what, what matters to the customer? Well, we had a chat, with the chat we have with the CEO from Cloud Foundry is interesting. Competitive advantage shifting. So I think you know the value is shifting to wherever whoever can enable that value. So if it's a cloud play, you have to have a platform that enables value. And I think ultimately it's going to come down to the, 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 the rise and fall of companies is coming, Stu. And I'm going to predict this right now on theCUBE. You are going to see the rising of companies and then the instant decay and crash of those companies. Some are going to grow fast and decay fast. This market is self-correcting, a lot of information, a lot of big data, a lot of information, a lot of intelligence is flowing all through the network. That means decisions will be fast, winners are going to be, be made and then gone if they can't continue to create value. Docker, great advantage. We heard that their file support standards creates kind of a table stakes there. They got to continue to push it. Ben Golub told me, he's like, we're not done. We got a lot of money in the bank, but they got to add value. And the cloud world now, it's about continuous improvement. It's about having speed as a competitive advantage. And speed has to be aligned with value to the customer where someone can get paid or monetized in some capacity. So what you're going to see is, kind of like I call it the nightclubs. It's hot, and then all of a sudden no one goes there anymore because it's too crowded, as Yogi Berra would say, or it's just not relevant. So being relevant, Creating value, these are the new competitive advantages and this, this, this economies of scale for people who try to copy that. So whoever invests in that agile, continuous improvement can create barriers to entry. So I think it's going to be an opportunity for startups and big companies. All right, and John, you know, I, I love the view we've had today. It was a little bright this morning. We're going to adjust the set tomorrow to make sure we're not quite so washed out. Don't have to wear sunglasses, but you know, we've been watching the Carnival ship uh, all day. I think it's going to be pulling out of port pretty soon. Uh, lots of nightlife going on. Uh, OpenStack definitely is a fun community. They got the uh, kind of crawl through the, uh, the the show floor tonight. Uh, some big parties. You you spoke to Jerome Lacotte, who's co-sponsor with the HP Helion Group, Scality and HP. Uh, tomorrow night, I hear it's the best location in Vancouver for a party, uh, a lot of other parties going on this week, so you know it's usually a show like this. They, they work hard, they contribute a lot, and they have some fun afterwards with the community. Stu, great stuff here. We're going to continue to document this over and over. The community's great here. I love the OpenStack community. We've been deep in this for a while. We've been covering, we've been documenting. We have a lot of interviews from all the players, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of our sponsors. Brocade, EMC, HP, Cisco, Red Hat. Uh, missing anyone, Stu? And, and just the Cloud Foundry Foundation itself Cloud Foundry helped bring us there. It's a really uh, the maturation, John, of what's happening on the board. Uh, you know, we talked at the beginning of this segment that you know really certified, powered by OpenStack. Um, you know, maybe a little bit slow to get that piece done, but uh, you know it, it's going to be good and help bring that uh, you know OpenStack to the planet. Is I think what they talked about in the keynote. Uh, some hard work to do, um, but moving in the right direction. This is theCUBE, we are here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Tomorrow will be a super busy day. We're going to get our first night under our belt. 
have a meeting, relax tonight, maybe have some nice craft beer here in, in Vancouver. Stu, and have a nice dinner, get to bed early. Big day tomorrow, big day tomorrow night. A lot of action, we're going to bring that to you. Look to siliconangle.com, wikibon.com. Go to crowdpages.co slash OpenStack, our new CMS. We're posting all the trending stories there from the crowd. And also go to crowdchat.net slash OpenStack for all the conversations. And of course, hit us up on Twitter. I'm at Furrier and Stu Miniman's at at Stu. It's the three-letter Twitter handle, Stu. You, you, you're good. We'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned. Keep watching. We'll have replays running all night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>